testing testing sound check okay should be okay let's go let's go welcome all to the master Liang show yeah so today we're gonna talk about the us cpi and also the us banks the earnings preview so now we are back to the us market so the cpi will be reported tomorrow uh, wednesday us time is 8 30 a.m so that will be about 8 30 p.m singapore time so tomorrow when i do my live stream then we will see the cpi whether uh, hit or miss estimates then for the banks the results will be this friday so wow, time passed very fast so we are back to first uh, back to uh, us earnings season and it's the first quarter of 2024 okay so welcome tiger shark sng boon jared ho uh, uh seftra jen Eng, chong costa jlo welcome all welcome all so so let's go let's go let's talk about the us market then later master come back to chit chat with you all so uh today from bloomberg we saw this fed official james bullard also they, they are child fed official so every time they go to a public event and say something uh, we are very concerned because they are so powerful. They, they vote on whether the Fed will cut interest rate or not. So it's a collective view of the child Fed official. So he was speaking at this investment event in Hong Kong uh, today. So his statement is that at this point, you should probably take the community and chair at face value. That means uh, what they are saying in, in their report or is, is their face value. Their best guess right now is still three cuts this year. So, so that's the base case. So this is actually a positive affirmation. That means a positive sign uh, of three rate cut. I would say that three rate cut this year is positive. Two rate cut will be negative. Well, that's how I will interpret it. You are looking at a very successful policy with a strong uh, economy. So US economy did not go into recession in 2-3 and this year for 2-4 uh, they are also not expecting a recession maybe slow growth of just 1% for the US GDP but it will, it will still be a positive growth especially with a new growth engine in AI uh, so a lot of things going right for the Fed right now so uh, inflation economy all this he says that overall things are heading in the right direction so in the end whether the direction is right or not we have to look at the data so the news that the fed official say three rate cut so for interest rate uh, businesses or segments that are more sensitive is like REITs and banks or they are sensitive to the interest rate so for REITs today in Singapore market, we see them rallying 1% to, to 2%, uh, blue chip REITs. So the rallying is also because that uh, previously investors was too pessimistic. Some even say that there will be no rate cuts uh, in, in, and even interest rate will go higher. So that's not true. Uh. I think most experts are saying either 2 cut or 3 cut. So uh, the rate cut will be beneficial to REITs. So REITs, number one, they are oversold and, and the yields are very attractive. Also, so they are uh, rebounding. Uh. Then, then uh, number two is also the outlook. Uh. Uh, so people think that the, the Fed will cut three times. So later I'll talk about the probability. So I feel that REITs, even despite this 1% or 2% rally, is still cheap. So I'm still DCAing into CFA. I'm still DCAing into link REITs. If I feel that the REITs have rallied too much and, and they are no longer undervalued, they are fairly priced, then I'll let you all know that I, I stopped my DCA, as simple as that. So uh, all eyes is on the CPI numbers uh, tomorrow night or 8.30 p.m. Singapore time because if inflation is very high, that will lead to the facts, uh, Fed like, be, being very reluctant to, to cut rates. They will only cut rates if they see that inflation is coming down, inflation is under control. So for most of these uh, analysts uh, or of these, of these major investment banks, uh, they say that the CPI will come in at 3.4 tomorrow for the month of March. That's pretty high. Or <laughs> uh, that's still above 3%. So it seems like inflation is not 
coming down towards the 2% target. So for me, right, I, I'm a bit worried uh, about inflation. And, and for the past uh, six to seven months, we, we see that inflation is still very stubborn above the 3% mark. So uh, on the average, like I mentioned the consensus is that inflation will come in at about 3.4%. So last month, right, uh, for the month of uh, February, inflation came in at 3.2%. So this is an increase. So it aged higher from 3.2% in February to 3.4% in March. So, but the market doesn't seem to sell down. Am I right? Because higher inflation should be bad for the market. It means that Fed will stay higher for longer. Because the market right, is still confident that the Fed will still make three cuts uh this year and secondly the fed right will not only look at the february and march data they can still look at april they can still look at may and they can even look at june so maybe two three months of inflation data to see inflation really coming down before they make the decision whether to cut rates or not so we still have two or three more months my personal view is that the next two three months inflation will still remain at, at three percent that, that is my, my, my view, 3% or higher. It's very sticky at, at 3% or higher. It's not coming down. Oh, that's my personal view. So tomorrow night, oh, wow, master, what if inflation is worse than expected? Instead of 3.4, it comes in at 3.5 or even 3.6. Or if inflation is bad, it comes at, let's say, 3.5, then the NASDAQ will be sold down. Or the NASDAQ could be down 1.5% or based on what the analysts are guess, guessing. And what's important is the 10-year treasury yield. The 10-year treasury yield will spike up towards 4.5%. Because if inflation comes in at 3.5%, it's very difficult for, for the Fed to make three rate cut. And that's how the, the market is interpreting this. So we can look at the 10-year yield chart, right? Back in October, was that there was maximum fear because Fed was still raising rates. The fear is that Fed could raise rates to 6% or even 7%. But I told you all, the fear is overblown. It's, it's like the pot boiling. Uh. If they raise the rates to 6%, the, the pot will overflow, the whole market will crash. So I told you all, Fed confirmed cannot raise past 6%. In fact, 5.25, 5.5 was the peak. And in the end, raised, uh, they held it there, it did not raise further. That's why the long-term yield peaked at 5%. And that's where we saw the, the REITs crashing to the bottom. And CFA, uh, REIT ETF was trading at 75 cents. And the uh, SREIT uh, index was trading at, I think, 980 level or 970 and, and, and level. So, so that was when the, the REITs uh, bottomed off. Then subsequently, we saw that the sentiment shift towards that Feds could make 6 or even 7 rate cuts in 2024. Uh, then we saw rates coming down very sharply. The 10-year yields came to as low as 3.8%. Uh, now it's inch, inching higher and higher. Uh, now it's at 4.4 and heading towards 4.5. So over the past three months, especially this year, the sentiment is that 6 to 7 rate hike is unrealistic. Uh, investors are falling back more to a more realistic 2 or 3 rate cuts. So with only two or three rate cuts, it means that uh, interest rate will remain higher for longer. That's why the long-term yield uh, is rising to 4.5%. And for assets like real estate investment trust, I, I explained yesterday, it's relative to the 10-year yield. So uh, 10-year yield, this is risk-free and you can get 4.5%. So you want to own a risk asset that is paying a high income. Also, uh, you will demand a higher yield. REITs cannot be trading at 4.5%, am I right? 4.5% or 5% yield for REITs. People might as well buy the 10-year government bond, which is risk-free. So in order to compensate for taking market risk, volatility risk, investors will demand 6% or 6.5% of for blue-chip REITs. So, so that is the thinking. So if, if it goes to, let's say, uh, uh, the Fed does not cut, worst-case scenario, the Fed have zero rate cut this year. What will happen to the 10 year yield? It will go to go back to 5%. Then the Singapore REITs will crash. 
then it, it might come down 10% and the yields can go as high as 7%. Also, oh, that's the, the, the doom, doomsday scenario. But what, at the end of the day, there's always a possibility, but what is the odds of it uh, happening? So you have to look at the CME Fed Watch tool. So basically, this is the futures market where, where traders bet on uh, the future rate and what's the probability of this. So this table, right, or for a layman, wow, very confusing. What, what does it mean? So many numbers, but don't worry, master is here to explain to you all in simple terms. So currently we are at 5.2, 5.5%. So if there's no rate cut, it means that the odds of this remaining at this level. Or five, then this is the one rate cut, two rate cut, or three rate cut. So every cut is 25 basis points. We're, we're assuming this because Feds want to do it gradually. So every cut is, is most likely to be 25 basis point. So, so that's the basis on, of our thinking. So the next meeting that has a probability of cutting is the June meeting. Or, uh, now we are at uh, April. There's, there's no meeting, uh, Fed meeting uh, this month. Or the next one is the 1st of May. But market is pricing in a 100% chance. Or there's a no way that, that they will cut rates or in the coming meeting in May. Also, uh, market has a pricing a 50-50% chance that the first rate, first rate cut will be in June or 50-50. So my personal view is that if I have to flip a coin, which side will I bet? I will bet that they will cut rates. I think despite inflation being sticky at uh, above 3%, I think it's still reasonable to cut rates for, uh, to 5 to, and 5.25%. Because the interest rate is still much higher than the inflation. It will still pass down inflation a bit. Then uh, another set of probability, right, will be the second rate cut. The second rate cut, the market is pricing in most likely like, out of 38, 32% chance that or the second rate cut will occur uh, uh, between September to the end of the year, or which is uh, 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 the, the last quarter, I would say. Also third quarter, uh, one cut, uh, second quarter, uh, fourth quarter, another cut. Then in between, uh, there will be another cut. Uh, so, how will we uh, interpret la, oh, by the year end how many cuts? So, you look at this purple line that I drawn here. The last meeting is in December. So, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 6 more uh, Fed meetings ahead. Also, within the, the next 6 meetings, right, there is a 2.9% chance. That means this is the doomsday scenario that I just mentioned. There's a, almost 3% chance that the Feds do not cut rates. So there's a 3% chance that REITs, real estate investment trust, could crash or because Feds choose uh, not, not to cut rates. So this is the risk. But I really don't expect this to happen. Uh. And there's also a 16% chance that Fed only do one cut. This will also be negative for REITs. But REITs, I don't think they, they will crash. But if there's only one cut, they, they will just continue to remain depressed because they already crashed so much and they are trading at near... 20% discount to the book value. So the most likely scenario like you see here, right, is two or three cuts by the year end. So there's a 32.8% chance that there's two cuts by year end. And there's or a 31.6% chance of three cuts. But I'm still more, if I st have to make a bet, I'll still bet on, on, on three cuts. Uh. Yeah, but, but it's either three or two cuts, I think. A anywhere else, like four or, or one cut is too extreme. So it's either two or, or, or three cuts. Yeah. So so we see how it plays out. Yeah. But general consensus is that three cut is good for the market. Two cut or, or less it is not good. Uh, it, it could uh, crash the market. So that that's how I, I will think about in terms of interest rate and the number of cut or in layman terms or that's how I explain to you all. So my biggest worry right for uh, affecting inflation and affecting the decision to cut rates is the oil prices and, and not much people you won't see much news on the oil prices or well, i basically i don't find any news on, on on oil prices but the russia ukraine war is still ongoing the middle east war is, is still ongoing there's no ceasefire if there's a ceasefire that then oil prices might, might come down or well, then uh, china is still growing rapidly uh, india is still growing rapidly so india and china they are the manufacturing hub of the world and they consume the most oil to do manufacturing, to do production, especially China, the, the factory of the world. So China is recovering. 
they are using more oil there's more demand and there's two out, outgoing war so that hurts the supply so from december until now oil has been inching up from the 70 dollar level now is the 85 dollar level already so uh, if it continues to trend up then inflation will not come down as simple as that because oil affects everything everything that we buy you need oil to run the factories also uh, so oil is one that I, I will look carefully especially if oil goes to 90 95 or even 100 hundred dollar oil will crash the market hundred dollar oil is is quite scary uh, hundred dollar oil the, the news of hundred dollar oil might crash the market so US market has gone up a lot uh, be it tech stocks or uh, AI stocks or be it crypto related have all gone up so uh, coming f uh, Friday right always uh, the US banks they will start to report results so the big question is master banks US banks how they are doing what's the outlook can buy or not so the analysts uh, they have some expectation uh, for the banks because interest rate right will start to come down so banks is also sensitive to interest rate or they, they borrow money from the depositors but by paying a uh, interest rate and then they take the money to lend it out for car, car, car loan housing loan or or even corporate loans and then the difference right is their net interest margin so because now right instead of lending at the 5.25 percent going forward they, they might lend at a lower rate so that will hurt their profitability and the other side is that paying depositors in the past they only have to pay depositors one or two percent but now there's so many fintech players there's the apple pay there's so five there, there's paypal so people can put their money and the money is transferred to money market fund they get a high interest rate so the deposit cost of uh, so cost of borrowing money for for banks has gone up so the more expensive to borrow and their lending rate has peaked already and, and it's coming down so their net interest margin is actually being compressed so their profitability is being hurt so the outlook for big banks are uh, improved over the past one year uh, so and now they are expecting the feds to just make between uh, two to three cuts as compared to the six or seven cut so previously six or seven cut will be very bad for the banks now two to three cut uh, that means the net interest margin will come down slower and will not come down sharply so jp morgan citibank wealth Fargo will report on friday goldman sachs is on monday morgan stanley and bank of america will, will be on tuesday so so i'll look at their earnings that if it's interesting i cover it is it, nothing much if it's same as exactly exactly what I, I i talked about today then then i won't cover i see how it goes okay so for the u.s big bank right that like i mentioned this they are the chart of their net interest margin so jp morgan is the biggest you notice that for q124 analyst is expecting their net interest margin to come down so net interest margin has already peaked already or uh, and, and their net interest margin is now starting to trend down or uh, th that's the trend so net interest margin will hurt the bank's profitability it will hurt their earnings so bank analysts are anticipating net income for the first three months of 2024 to fall by about 14 percent so maybe their net interest margin let's say 2.5 percent so a 14 percent decline is maybe like a, a, a point two like that from 2.5 it becomes 2.3 percent net interest margin so so the number will look small but percentage wise it, it looks huge and because of that right the big question is how much of their earnings will come down or well, that hurts their non interest income but they also have the and that hurts their uh, net interest income but they have the non interest income uh, businesses like credit card uh, investment banking uh, can it make up for the loss of this net income or uh, and stabilize their earnings so so that's the big question so the the another thing that investors will look out for is bad loans over the course of the year look out for loan losses to continue grinding higher because now we are still in a high interest rate environment so credit card debt or uh, is snowballing are uh, people default defaulting on their credit card debt then mortgage loans are, are like seven percent car loans is like 15 percent so uh, but the economy is strong so so we are not seeing uh, a lot of defaults most of the so-called defaults is in the corporate loans example exposure to commercial real estate most office vacancy in us is about 20 percent so so look out for the bad loans so 
uh, on the positive side, right, for all these banks, right, their investment banking revenues is trending upwards. So this is the non-interest income. So they earn money through a fee. For example, recently we have the Reddit IPO. So a few of these banks together, they help to file the IPO, they help to distribute the shares or get the new shareholders, get it listed, they earn a fee. So if the IPO market uh, continues to be hot, there are tech stocks, uh, crypto stocks, uh, AI stocks, uh, there's a wave of listing in the second to fourth quarter, then the banks will benefit from this uh, non-interest income to, to balance off the decline of their uh, net, net interest. So uh, Master, uh, JP Morgan, Bank of America, all these US banks can buy or not? My answer is no, cannot buy. Boat has left port already. Boat already left port. I had been shouting by one year ago. Or oh, you look back at my video, remember master, I shout. Banks was attractive oh, because uh, back then people were worried about a recession and they worried that their loan book oh, have too much exposure to commercial real estate. But I explained to you all that their balance sheet is huge, very diversified. But I also mentioned, do not buy the regional banks. Only go for the blue chip banks or if you don't know how to pick the blue chip banks, buy the ETF, XLF, Extra Large Finance. So JP Morgan over the past one year is up over 50%. It's near the 52 week high already and it's trading at a price to book of 1.9 times. So what is that valuation? Banks will usually look at the book value because the more assets they have, the more uh, earnings, the more interest they can generate because they leverage off their asset. If I have $1 asset, I can leverage eight times. Or oh, that means $1 asset, I can do $8 of borrowing and, and, and lending. Also, then my, my earnings are amplified. So for JP Morgan, you can see this bar is red color. Because it's the, in terms of historical price to book value over the past 10 years, it traded at a 9% discount to book value. I think this, this was during the COVID period in, in 20. And on average, it traded at about 1.4 times book. The highest is two times book. So now at 1.9 times book, is at the peak of valuations already. If you look at this uh, chart of price to book over the last two decades, you see that JP Morgan, right? Uh, at the it, highest it trade is about two times book. Lowest is trade is that like, example, the global financial crisis, it trade below one times book value. And, and during the COVID period, uh, it trade below a one time book value. So only during crisis, it, it trades below a book value. Uh, so historically is about 1.4 times book value. So I will say that even our Singapore our best bank, uh, DBS, is similar to JP Morgan. They both generate high return of equity of say like a 15% uh, kind of range. So JP Morgan, DBS, they are all high quality uh, blue chip banks. But for JP Morgan, I say that based on price to book valuations is on the high side. I, I don't recommend buying. In fact, I would say if you bought it a, a year ago uh, and now I think it's time to take profit. Uh. One year you make 50%, I think it's very good returns. Uh. You should strongly consider taking profits uh, or, or on your US bank position. So another one that I look, I will look at is that Bank of America. Also, JP Morgan Bank of America, they are usually the, the most traded because it's a household name, very strong brand. It's easy to, easier to understand as compared to a, a name like Wells Fargo, uh, Morgan Stanley, or people, uh, maybe pe people are not so familiar. Oh, so like Bell America uh, and Citibank, it, it, you, you, will see, uh, it, it's like you will see them more often on, on, on the news. So for Bell America over the past one year is up 34%. So, so it's quite a strong rally, especially uh, over the past uh, six months, I would say most of the gains are, are from the past six months. So also near the 52 week high and it's trading about 1.1 1 times book value. So for Bank of America, right, you can see historically they, they trade between half price to book value to up to 1.6 times book value. So now they're actually near their, their medium. So I think Bank of America uh, is still reasonably priced. So still can buy. Or Bank of America still can buy. Whereas JP Morgan is overvalued. I'll, I'll say that Bank of America is uh, fairly priced. But will I buy Bank of America? No, Master will not buy Bank of America. Master only buy banks or buy REITs when they are trading at a discount. I will only buy a great company when they are undervalued and trading at a discount. And, and that discount was one year ago, uh, not today. So uh, 
for banks, right, the easy way to easiest way is to look at the index XLF or extra large finance ETF. So I recommended this about one year ago. Then the next half of a year it went sideways. Then the recent half year it rallied sharply, rallied thirty percent. So be it XLF or, or JP Morgan, I think thirty to fifty percent. I think it's a good return over the past one year. And U.S. banks because there's a thirty percent dividend tax. So you're not really for the dividend. Yeah. You're buying U.S. banks for capital gains, so thirty percent gain I think is an easy take uh, or at this forty dollar level. Last year, one year ago, I covering the XLF, it was like twenty, thirty two, thirty three dollar. Remember, yeah. So now forty dollar level is easy sell uh, to to take profit. Uh. So banks as a whole, they are either fairly priced or overvalued. So thirty or forty or fifty percent profit, I think is an easy level to to take profits. Or because the, the 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 interest rates already peaked already, so their earnings potential already peaked, and their net interest margin will come down. Their earnings will also come down. It will be a down cycle from here. So for DBS, boss, sixty percent of my viewers is from Singapore. Master ah, DBS, wow, very hot eh. AK seventy one say hoot 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 ah, cha 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 can buy or not? So DBS at this level, the dividend yield is still very attractive, almost six percent. If you buy DBS, is purely for this. Uh, six percent dividend, but if you are hoping for capital gains on top of this, then I think it's a bit of a wishful thinking. In fact, you buy at this level, there's a high chance for capital losses. So don't chase dividend blindly. You must look at it as a total return, dividend plus capital gains or capital losses. A lot of these uh dividend investors try, right? they show you they how and that they have how much passive income. Or how much dividends, but they don't share with you what is their paper losses or their paper gains ah. Most likely losses ah. Uh, like for example, AK seventy one, he holds so much sampan risk. He's sitting on huge uh, paper losses, but but he won't tell you. So your real returns is, is capital gains, capital losses, uh, plus your your dividends. Then that's your real returns. Also, don't blindly chase uh, after dividends. The six percent dividend looks attractive, but you are looking at peak earnings, peak dividends. Because look at the this is a maximum chart, or over the past two and a half decade, if you buy DBS now, you are buying at all time highs, all time highs, all time high. Then you go in buy, COVID that time or uh seventeen nineteen twenty one dollar you you don't want to follow master buy, thirty six dollar you want to follow AK seventy one buy. That I I nothing I can do to save you, nothing I can do to to help you already. So for DBS right. During like uh crisis, they can trade at ten twenty percent discount to book value, and now it's euphoria. They're trading at one point four eight times uh book value, so that's near the peak uh, and also above their medium value. So it's it's uh dark yellow but not yet red color uh, But also it's red color like J P Morgan is is screaming overvalued. Oh, but I think I'll say that D B S is slightly overvalued, not say super overvalued. Slightly overvalued because price to book is, is on the high side, but the six percent dividend yield is still attractive. So based on the price to book chart, you can see that you're you're trading. You're now you're buying at at, at the at the top range of, of valuations. So if you are willing to buy, then you know that even if it drops twenty thirty percent, you will still hold to collect the six percent. So be it. So if you buy at this level, right, it means. You just want to get six percent dividend. You don't hope for any sort of capital gains. Then, then, then I feel that's that that's okay. So on like investing note lah or social media, I see a lot of hype ah, a lot of enthusiasm on uh DBS. So I copy paste all this meme ah is from investing note by the contributor. I think is Happy D, a very cute cat. He has a few million dollar portfolio. He is a very, a uh, friendly. Very respectable community member in uh investing note. I used to chat with him when I was on in uh investing note. So I'm not trying to make fun of him or what lah. Or he's a he's already retired already. He's a very a uh, seasoned uh dividend investor. Just that why wow, his the meme is very interesting. Like it's on fortune ah. Buy only good company. Grow stronger. Chong faster. Work harder. Right further. Or shoot higher. Uh, don't scared to average up. Oh, buy 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 all, all the way. <laughs> Work harder. Opportunity come. No give chance, oh! Right further, don't in and out until side side come out. Hold on to your winners. 
Also invest smarter, or you can simply all in BBS. Also the sentiments, the, or the they are all very high on, on investing note because banks are doing very well. So the sentiments is investors they are they are very comfortable dollar cost averaging into DBS, but they are very uncomfortable dollar cost averaging into REITs. But I think the 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 comfortable thing to do may not be the most rewarding thing. The Often the best reward is to be a contrarian. First, as a contrarian, then you can get the good deals, the value. So my thinking is that I won't dollar cost average into DBS. I won't buy DBS. In fact, I will sell all my DBS shares if I have, have them now. 35, 36 level is a easy sell. Lah. Whereas the, the, the common folk, folks or the majority is saying that, wow, DBS, 2024, H&M, Ho and Makan. <laughs> Uh, I see only no buy. Uh, I, I will wait for six dollars. So this is a, 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 a mocking the Japanese lady. La. The Japanese lady doing two zero two zero right master when DBS crashed from thirty dollars to twenty one dollar master fire my first bullet. Then the Japanese lady say that oh DBS will drop to six dollar. I buy too early. Then uh twenty one dollar I bought uh uh nineteen dollar I bought. $17 I bought, then I run out of bullet. My average price was like $19.50, or about the $20 level. Well, well that's about one, one times uh, book value. So that, that's where I, I thought DBS was cheap. So I fired my three bullets. I, I totally out of money already. Yeah, so so, uh, so I put almost 100000 into DBS, and I got put my screenshot, got picture, got talk. Those that follow me on investing note, I shared with you all my, my, my trading screenshot. That I bought into DBS average price nineteen dollar uh fifty cents. I put in about one hundred thousand dollar. So when DBS recovered uh post lockdown to thirty dollars level, I sold out all my shares to, to lock in a fifty percent gain. So I made about fifty k uh investing in DBS. So after I sold DBS, where did my money go? Uh, so you all know the story. It went into Alibaba, and I lost two hundred thousand on Alibaba. So in the stock market. Uh, there will be wins, there will be losses. So I don't cry over spilled, spilled milk. So you see me, I, I, do I keep complaining, keep whining about my losses on Alibaba? No, I'm open to sharing my, my, my losses because uh, I, I'm not afraid of losing uh, 200000 because I know that my investing style, my, my value investing works. In the long run, I, I, I will earn back the 200000 and even more. My, my wealth will only continue to grow over the next decade or the next decades ahead or oh, give me another five year 10 year 20 year my portfolio will way 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 uh bigger or seven or even eight figure no problem i'm, I'm very confident with that yeah because i've been in the market for like 15 six, 15 years already uh, i know my methodology works so those that follow me on uh, edm hardware zone for real investing note you all know most of my picks uh long term that they are mostly so solid picks uh. Yeah, so but one thing is that I have a lot of haters because uh people right because my view is I'm a contrarian. So when I'm a contrarian, right, I buy things that nobody wants, like Alibaba, nobody wants because China is uninvestable. Then I would like to warn my followers of what to sell, what to avoid. When I warn my followers or that uh, in like two zero and two one that high growth tech is a bubble, crypto is a bubble. A lot of people whack master. Master, you stupid. Like, have fun staying poor. Especially those, those Tesla toxic bull. Also, in the past, in uh, Hawaii Zone Forum, I warned people, Noble, don't try to bargain honey. It crashed from $2 to $0.50. Cents. I think it's going to zero. Don't be fooled by their discount to book value. There's, there could be accounting fraud. And it went to zero. So people who are long on Noble, they hate me. People who are long on Tesla, long on crypto, they, they, they hate me. So so now I'm I'm warning about the AI bubble. I, I don't chase Nvidia, or don't uh, chase crypto. Then I'm warning about the the banks. Don't chase DBS. So so there are people who hate me. And say, Master, you don't understand. DBS is the strongest bank. It's blue chip. It's very solid. Uh, very good dividends. So uh, if you, you want to whack Master, so be it. Uh, or I will just delete and block your contents and move on. In the past, if people say. Uh, they try to like, say that I'm wrong on DBS. I will reply them. I will debate with them to to explain my point. But nowadays, I, I don't want to debate. I don't want to argue with anyone. 
if you have a different view then then so be it. i hope that my contrarian view is uh, beneficial to you but if you just want to scold master or you just want to vent on master or that that or you want to insult master then i will just uh, block and hide you because you are not my audience uh, i realize that uh, not everyone is your audience or uh, only people who understand value investing understand that uh, why we want to be a contrarian and not a blind contrarian a blind contrarian is everything people do we also take the opposite uh, master me i don't think i'm a blind uh, contrarian i, I usually I, i'm contrarian because i have my own reasoning like that like dbs i showed you all is because of the valuations it's 1.5 times book value is near a record high valuation it, it makes no sense to be buying or uh, uh, to pay a, a 50 percent premium to book value when i can buy chinese banks chinese financial stocks at 40 percent to 70 percent discount to book value and dbs actually has one third exposure to china 35 percent of, of, of their business comes from china so it's one third of, of chinese banks a lot of our singapore blue chip companies they have a huge exposure to, to china but that's how the singapore economy works we have very strong ties with asia and, and china and also us yeah, so that's all my sharing i hope you all enjoy it ah, if you feel that it's un insightful feel free to give master a like or oh, yeah thank you thank you all oh. yeah, so feel free to ask me anything nah, about banks or, or about the cpi so chit chat with you all a bit before i go uh, offline oh yeah wow suddenly eh, i just finished i see special now eh. special special like eh, wow chose you fuck off eh. then you earn relax relax no need so angry don't need so angry yeah master now more more ping chang sing nah. If Cho come, we just ban and delete Ken already. We don't need to be angry with them. We just block them Ken already. Also, Daniel Ng, thanks for support. Thanks for your mala hot pot. Hope you are doing well. Jin Yu, Richmond Ho, Jackie Lee, Jared, Tokoyomi, Li Yong, Yuwahara, uh, Toys, Anantas, Food Mangi, SC, BTC, Jeff Lu, Cho Ya, TL Cha, Lawrence Kok, Chin Hoi. Welcome, welcome all. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, tomorrow is holiday. Yeah. Tomorrow, tomorrow is Hari Raya. So hope you all enjoy your holiday. So tomorrow, it, I see how like, if there's no major news, I, I might not stream. But 50-50, but, oh, nowadays, uh, I, I don't stream every day. Well, default is Monday to Friday, I, I, I stream. But sometimes, if there's no market news, then, then maybe I don't stream. So tomorrow, I see how. If the Hong Kong market got news, then I, I talk about the Hong Kong market. Uh, so so I depends on the news flow. So nowadays, I'm quite freestyle. Like like tonight, I talk focus on US market. Uh, then tomorrow, I might be talking about the Hong Kong market. Yeah. So there's three market: there's Singapore, Hong Kong, and US. Yeah. So so master is freestyle lah. Free freestyle. Yeah. So like today, I, I totally never share any news on, on the Hong Kong market, Chinese market. So to tomorrow, I, I might cover the hong kong market so it's holiday for you all hope you all enjoy your holiday but master still working out uh, part-time job like that yeah so jen ng red card uh reach prices for dividend use rise no red card uh reach uh, price high dividend you uh, which is uh, better uh? uh now because there's uh, expectation of rates higher for longer that's why uh, rates are depressed so now I'm shouting buy or on REITs, but REITs will not remain depressed forever. Once like June or July, the Feds start to cut rates, right? Then I think the boat will leave port already. So usually blue chip companies, they, they won't be selling at a discount forever. The, the op window of opportunity is usually limited, maybe like three to six months. Uh, the only exception is like China market, like Alibaba, the window of opportunity almost three years three years to buy alibaba cheap so it's an abnormality lah because china is uninvestable uh, but, but like 2020 you saw like reeds are uh, banks are uh, they all sell at a discount that opportunity was like half a year only so i think this reeds sale will not last forever lah. that's why for the first half of this year every month I, i'm buying the link reeds and cfa then if the second half of this year if link reeds and the cfa uh, start to recover then i won't buy already then, then I, I i will be buying something else then i'll update you all yeah so ocbc uh, ocbc i never covered uh, but but it's the same reasoning you have to look at their price to book uh, but i think most people that they're looking at dbs yeah I, I, so I, I never cover ocbc 
you check the price to book the historical versus the historical price to book oh. Kia Hin on thank you thank you thank you for your Chai Pong Hua la hua la yeah Emissius E AK71 his reeds and banks become or close to uh, freehold yeah he is a very good storyteller la. all his picks all is freehold one so even crash to zero he never lose money one so you do your own due diligence uh, whether his things can be lived on or not yeah master me i'm not an auditor uh, and he never publish his trade uh. i don't know why is his price all this uh. but he always brag that his picks all is freehold he collect uh 10 percent dividend for how many donkey years already whatever uh. he can break all his one uh, all he wants uh, but for him he he is already very rich he is a multi-millionaire i think three million dollar portfolio but He's a content creator more to like boost his ego to how lian ah. So same as Mr. Lu lah. So Mr. Lu and AK71, they, they, they are a content creator more like how lian ah. How lian they have a lot of um, money in, in like their CPF. Then Mr. Lu got JB Landed, uh, AK71 or Power of Dividend. Uh, they want to how lian, so be it lor. But for me, my, my objective is more towards like a uh, warning my, my followers not to chase the banks uh, blindly la, because valuations are, are on the high side la. yeah midnight uh, uh, banks are damn difficult to understand and value REITs are more simpler yeah REITs re are very simple because you are a landlord you buy cheap and, and you get the high rental you you buy high then you get low rental you but the property you want to buy you want to be high quality shopping mall or office asset near, near the MRT station Midnight, best time to buy banks is when they are depressed at peak fear. Not now, I think. Yeah, now it's maximum greed. Uh. People are greedy on banks. Banks, you want to buy when there's a lot of fear. So midnight, I feel that everybody want to buy the SG banks. Means now won't be the best time to buy. Yeah, exactly. I think now so much uh, hype, so much enthusiasm to buy banks. So I think banks is on the high side. And uh, DBS will be XB, uh, X bonus. I don't know when. Uh. XB you will drop to like 32, 33 like that. Then we see how it trends from, from there. But the full year, quarter by quarter, you look at the fundamentals, uh, whether they can maintain earnings or, or the DBS, the earnings will come down. My view is that maybe first two quarter, the earnings can be maintained. But third and fourth quarter onwards, the, the earnings will trend down when, when their net interest margin starts to come down. So you have to be, uh, 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 how to say, you have to be, uh, analyst law, you must follow their, their natural margin, follow their earnings. Initials E, port committed, so I have to call. Wow, you are a poker player, you know, huh? Uh, SPR less than one, that uh, yeah, means your stack port ratio. Wow, Initials, you are a poker player, you know all this, huh? Yeah, port committed already, must all in already, must bet already. Huh? I, I, I'm port committed to Alibaba. <laughs> so yeah, Jared, noble buyer hate you for what? Not as if you got word. Because the, the language I use sometimes is quite strong. Lah. So master is also at fault. I, I will say things like, Noble, $2 drop to $0.50. Cent. You think it's cheap. Ah. You come gong. Ah. Noble is going to go to zero. Because their assets are being marked up. Or it's a commodity trading company. So a lot of their uh, so-called NAV is from their contracts. Ah. Or which left hand pass right hand. You don't know what is their real asset value. And it's heavily geared. Also, I say people come gong to buy at 50 cent. So people all in Noble at 50 cent, like the YYH win. He all in 70k la, at 50 cents. Then it, it dropped to zero. It went bankrupt. So he lost 100%. His 70k all gone. So, so th that's why people hate me. La. But sometimes the language I use is, is quite strong. But it's more like entertainment. La. But this time you see, I tone down already. I never say people who buy DBS is come gong. <laughs> I never say that. But I gotta say that people who buy Tesla at four hundred dollar, three hundred dollar is come gong. Or they, they are being cheated by Elon Musk. I say that people who uh, chase the uh, Terra Luna la, the altcoin la, is a wild wild west. You will be scammed. You are come gong. Also, so when things explode, uh, people are angry and then people will whack master. But but all those people whack me, I, I delete and block already. So don't worry, everything is tidy up. Then now I got the moderators, all this. So so everything is clean up la, oh. Only people who really want to learn, uh, get the information from master, uh, they then be, want to be in our community, uh, they then, they then they stay. People who just want to attack master, master block already. So nowadays, 
rare la. Once in a blue moon, we will see some trolls or hitter. Then we just block and move, move on. No need to, to waste our energy uh, being angry with them. Uh, so, uh, toys, food and gadget for fun. Review uh, 200,000 is paper loss. Uh, realize loss. Paper loss. Uh, my Alibaba is paper loss. Alibaba needs to go back to $200. Then my, my 200 thousand paper loss uh, will be cancelled away because I got margin caught so my average price from 150 shoot up to 200 thousand so so it's a mix of realized loss and paper losses but once Alibaba goes to 200 then, then I recover my 200 thousand uh, in, in so called pap paper losses uh. Cliff Chu ML how many property do you have officially I only have one property which is this uh, HDB that I'm staying uh, or in the Kamati area Oh, but in the past, like in 20 and, and 21, uh, in hardware zone and the investing node, I was quarreling with those uh, Tesla toxic bull, those crypto bulls. Right? Then they keep saying, saying, Master, you have fun staying poor. So I, I said, then I want to counter attack them. So I did make some videos. Uh, then I post it on YouTube as YouTube short. Then I showcased two condo that I was staying at. Uh. Also, the, the two condo that I showcase, right, is actually, to, I will admit, is to Haolian. But Haolian is to whack back on those trolls. Because they keep saying, Master, you are what? You are Cai Peng Fire, you are poor man, you uh, only have HDB, uh, then you have fun staying poor. Uh. Uh, then, well, then I just Haolian say, then I tell them that Master own three property, uh, I got two condo, uh, I GPGT show you. So I posted video of two condo. Or, or to how then to them, or then, then to say that master wow own multiple property uh, you then have fun staying poor. So it's something that's very childish. So uh, after all the saga right after the crypto crash all this, I did clarify that actually the two condo doesn't belong to me. It belongs to my auntie. Well, my my auntie uh, is quite well off lah. She own five property la, huh? So I last time I used to to stay at, at, at uh, her property, but now. I I moved to stay in my, my own HDB. Yeah, so master only own one property. The, the other two condo that you all see in the past uh be belongs to my auntie la. Yeah, so people will, will whack me say master la, you, you can fire because you, you got a rich family members or rich uh, relatives. So I, I won't de deny that because everyone have have a have a, a, a different background la. So I I I'm fortunate la, uh, that, uh, uh, that that uh, I have a, a well off uh, auntie la, oh. so even if like example when I was like you saw the crazy story of Master Leong, well, I was depressed, I was in IMH, so I, I did not have income like for a few years all this, so I have a lot of support from my auntie. So my auntie is uh, my my mother's uh, sister la, oh. so, so then my mother is not around already. Oh, she she had cancer. That I spent three years uh, taking care of her. So life, right, that there's always ups and downs, or everybody is a different background, right? Yeah, so, so don't see a person, huh? uh, whether the person or how many assets the person has, how many property he has, uh, how many million dollars or uh, they have to, to judge whether the, the person huh, or it should be respected or not. I, I think, yeah, it, it's not too fair uh, to judge a person uh, based on their, their asset, but the thing with social media right is that people see what AK seventy one, wow got condo la, got three million dollar portfolio. Then everyone believe everything he says. So that that social media people are biased la. Or when when you how lean la, that you got millions and millions of people believe you more. But people who tend to how lean right, the thing is that uh they why they want to how lean they want to feed their ego. Oh so that that's that, that's that's the thing la, Oh. For me, I, I do YouTube, uh, it's more like I just want to share about the stock market, share my, my views, uh, share my pick, uh, share, share my, 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 my hobbies. Uh, yeah. So people will ask me, Master, uh, what is your net worth? Uh, what is your asset? Uh, are you rich or not? I will always give a simple answer. answer master is poor man. Uh. Master is poor man. Uh. Oh, master is poor man. Oh, so so that, that's my short answer. Yeah. yeah. yeah so I hope it, it clarifies. Uh. Oh, yeah, it clarifies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So everyone, the background is different. Uh. Yeah. Then cannot be uh, everything I also tell you all. Uh, uh, what, what is my net worth? How much I really own? How many underwear I have? So online, right? 
uh, be skeptic uh, or usually what people tell you right uh, not, uh, whether it's the truth or not right you you will never know uh, uh, because everyone has their own agenda everyone wants to uh, project an, an image I uh, want to build an image especially if you are a guru you want to sell costs of course you must say you are you made multi millions in the stock market then people will buy your course ma. so so for me I'm not selling any cost so so I, I I'm quite open to say that I lost 200,000 on Alibaba because I don't care ah. I'm not selling a cost ma. but but if I'm selling cost you think I will tell you that I lose money man no ma. I will say I 100% win rate ah. I own three property ah. I have 10 million dollar portfolio ma. That that's the image that I will want to build ma. so 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 uh, when you ask questions like oh how many uh, property you own what's your investment portfolio uh, all this you only fit into the salesman uh. the salesman will tell you the sky and the heaven how how uh, how, how good they are uh. but but it's meaningless uh. for me it's not about all this uh. it's about understanding the stock fundamentals the macro environment the company's overvalued undervalued what is their mode what is their business model like my high Lao uh, deep dive you can see uh, that I really understand and put a lot of time to research and understand the company. Uh, uh, that, that's my style. Uh. I'm not here to sell any cost or, or to howl anything. <laughs> so yes, that there are, are moments that I howl in in the past or what uh, uh, is to, to whack those Tesla toxic bulls. Uh, but, but, but that's not my, 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 my nature. <laughs> so so that, that clarifies it. Uh. Yeah, it's to whack my haters. Uh, in my hater, uh, yeah, so it's to whack my haters. Yeah. Yeah. So TL Cha, I'm glad you share a uh, dividend philosophy. I was going to buy DBS Collect Dividend after <laughs> listen to you. You don't want to buy. Yeah, so luckily you listen to me. Uh. You want to buy is nothing wrong. Because when you see example social media people post this, uh, wow, it's damn funny that I really think that they make this meme uh, is, is very cute that if if me I'm right, a new investor, I say two or only three years, right? I see this, right? I also will follow everyone. I will follow more. I, I say, take $3,000, uh, wet 100 shares, la, or 3,600, take 3,600 3, DCA for this month, or wet 100 shares of DBS, or 6% dividend, not bad. Ma. You will just follow the herd ma, if you don't know what you're doing. You see everyone buy DBS, you will buy, but if you really study the fundamentals, or example, like what is price to book ratio, uh, what is the let's say the net interest income trend that actually that the net interest income will start to compress how banks make money if you think deeper then you think that hey, actually 36 dollar makes no sense <laughs> if you understand the fundamentals and how banks work you, you think that, hey, it makes no sense to be buying bbs now so so what i'm trying to do is to educate you all how to how to look at banks what is a good deal what is a bad deal but, but a good deal and a bad deal is, is subjective ah. a lot of people will tell you that uh, DBS 6% dividend yield is a good deal but master telling you that it's not a good deal because you're looking at the peak earnings the, the, the best best moment of, of the banks and, and as interest rate start to come down the banks will weaken so so that's the based on the fundamentals <laughs> yeah 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 midnight wow you have 60 socks five of them are freehold about 10% oh that, that's not that's not bad yeah so the AK71 that one we all know la, is the storytelling la. Yeah, get fit, uh, not quit. Okay, will you cover less popular but germs in certain market? How about healthcare stock? Healthcare stock is out of my circle of competence. If I cover a stock, it has been within my circle of competence. Like, like I cover Haiti Lao is because I've done a lot of research. Uh, I understand Haiti Lao. I understand the fundamentals. Uh, that, that's why I'm able to uh, cover it. But if I don't understand the industry, I don't understand the company, then, then I won't cover it. Uh. Yeah. So it depends, uh, it depends, yeah. Okay, ML, what is the IH uh, SRE index ticker code? Uh? No, I, I, IH, that one is, is uh, that one is actually how I say, uh, is, is the is an index, so uh, it's an index by the SGX itself. Then some of the ETFs follows this index. I forget which one already. Suddenly I forget already. Yeah. SR. Oh, Oh, you all know, yeah, SRT, la. SRT, I think it's the Philip one, SRT, read uh, ETF, oh, it's a uh, CSOP, it's a China fund manager, la. Oh, so this one is the one that follow the, the SRE index, and you can see that their holdings are CICT, la, 
MLT like all these uh, blue chip weeds is all inside yeah but but uh, why I recommend the CFA and not SRT because SRT you cannot use CPF uh, OA to buy uh, CFA can use CPF to, to buy then uh, because if you buy an ETF you want diversification this one is pure Singapore Whereas the CFA have Hong Kong, like the link weeks, which I feel is very undervalued. Yeah, so, so my, my thinking a bit uh, different at all. Yeah, okay. So, okay, I see you got any more questions. Uh? Feeling tired already. Okay, thanks, thanks all for, 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 for support. Oh, that is the, yeah. The condo not my one. Uh. The two condo is not my one, it's my auntie one. Uh. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I only own one HDB. Uh. But, but to be honest, I, like, I shared in my, my, my telegram group, uh, I got help my auntie to, to manage uh, her properties, all this. Uh. But I don't like to manage property. Like I tell you, uh, uh, I don't like to deal with the property manager. I don't like to deal with tenants. I don't like to do with uh, the, like the repair personnel, like to the plumbing, uh, the electricity, uh, all this. I don't like to deal with people. Uh. But, but through helping my auntie manage those properties, I gain a lot of experience also. Then I realized that I, 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 I don't like hard asset. I like paper asset. I, I like stocks. So you learn from that. Lor. Yeah, you learn from that. Lor. Yeah. So, so yeah. So everyone, the, the, the background is, is different. Lah. Yeah. Master is just an ordinary Singaporean. Lah. Stay HDB, then uh, go hiking, play with cats, then look at the stock market, then come YouTube, talk hot about the stock market. That, that, that's it. Lah. Master is just very ordinary. Lah. Huh? Not, I have nothing much to how lian. Uh. Yeah, maybe when my Alibaba go to $500, then I'll how lian. But that could be 5 or even 10 years later. I don't know. Yeah. Jeff, do ML, Kepa read any comment to go in? I talk about Kepa read, right? It's, the U is good. The, it's a good discount. It's the 5 Tiger General. So I have a buy call on, on the 5 Tiger General. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah. Thank, thank, thanks all for, for the support. Yeah. So, uh, okay. Oh, you, I saw reality income. Reality income is one of the popular REITs uh, in, in the US market. It's, I think, the largest market cap uh, REITs. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, you know, yeah, those ask personal questions, sometimes I answer, sometimes I don't answer. Uh, but if every time ask the same thing, uh, uh, every time people ask, Master, how many property you have, then I don't answer. Uh, like once in a while, once in a few months, people ask, that then maybe I just clarify. Uh, oh, yeah. So, yeah. Midnight, then you I also don't like uh, managing property. Manage one find it irritating. Yeah. That's why it, it's tiring. Uh. You I, I think by if you manage before property, you know it's very tiring. That then, then you realize that the, the beauty, the wonder of, of being owning REITs. REITs is hassle-free, trouble-free, and, and you get passive income. Yeah, so so that's why I, I'm a believer of REITs. But but I only want to buy REITs when they are trading at a discount. Same thing, uh, you go buy a condo. Why why you want to buy a condo at fair value, you want to buy when, when nobody wants the condo and it's trading at 20 30 percent uh, discount. Uh, to, to is the last traded price or, or from the peak, it has come down 20 30 percent. Then you consider on whether you want to buy the condo or not. What's the location? What is the rental yield? So, same thing, like you buy condo or, or buy REITs, you must do analysis, see whether it's undervalued or not, the quality good or not. Yeah, so that's all my sharing for tonight. Oh, take care everyone, have a good rest, enjoy your holiday tomorrow, bye bye. Ding, 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 ding. <laughs>